Going on about people that have no friends, I definitely <laughs> laughed a lot when I saw this clip of DJ Academics ranting and raving at the fact that all these industry people like Charlemagne, Gilly, and Wallow and stuff haven't necessarily um, reciprocated the love that he's shown to them. Because I guess for whatever reason, Academics, you know, as much as I like the guy, he's a very strange dude because I felt like in my impression of him, he's always been a bit of a dork, always been a bit of an outcast, always been a bit of a quote unquote loser. Then he finally found his way, finally found his lane by streaming and having a very successful blog, um, Instagram page where he spoke, speaks about urban news and culture and hip hop and all that stuff. So he does amazingly well there. He signs deals, signed with Rumble, Spotify podcasts like Millionaire, all that good stuff. So he finally kind of made his little lane. And obviously with the changing nature of hip hop and it being more acceptable to not just be a certain type of person who listens to hip hop, right? You don't have to be street. You don't have to be hood. You don't have to grow up in a certain area or grow up in a certain time. You can be 100% yourself and still be somewhat accepted in the industry and the scene. So, you know, you'd think you'd be happy with that. But for some reason, maybe it's because of his age, because he's weirdly in that kind of weird in-between bit of being a millennial and being a Gen Z kid age-wise. Maybe because of that, he kind of always has this, it feels like weird deep down desire of being accepted by the gatekeepers. He wants to have the kind of acceptance and approval of the OGs, like the Gillian Wallow, like the Charlemagne's and stuff, those older generations have people, when really I shouldn't think he should matter, it should matter to him. And he should also, I think, in my opinion, be um, aware that he's never going to get it from them because he's not cool right he's a bit of a dork like they're always going to see him as a bit of a lame because of how he talks about street politics because of how he talks about certain people's music because of just how he carries himself he's never going to be looked at as somebody like those people would actually like or want to spend any amount of time with so i'm surprised that he's surprised that they don't want to you know be friendly and pally pally with him in that way but i also think this is a further example of just how transactional industry relationships are and you have to realize that very very quickly i realized that very quickly when i was in the streetwear scene and the fashion scene that usually is always about what you can do for somebody it's never really about the love and about them being friends of you or liking you it's usually what can you do for that person and if you can build some love and relationships out of that then fair enough but you should never mistake in somebody's you know affection for you or love for you in the scene as it being real it's always because of something you can do for them and remember you can't do something for them it kind of goes away so you have to be very clear from the beginning of what you're expecting from this relationship so if they ask you for a favor you have to make sure that you pluck up the courage to say hey i want this in return for this i'm giving you and not think everything is done on strength and love but let's play the clip anyway with DJ academics ranting and raving a feeling like the people that he would do anything for are also not willing to come on his podcast or create content with him or whatever maybe no nah, nigga i just had to get on my chest i ain't gonna lie to you it ain't sit right with me it ain't sit right that i've been scheduling with some people for a year then I've been asking another nigga for like mad long, but he got a hater on his shit. I, I'm looking like, oh, we not showing love. It's not mutual over here. If it's not mutual, just say this shit. But don't, we not finna do the not mutual shit in private because I was a nigga who was a fan of everybody. including. By the way, no one's gonna not say it's not mutual in public. They're not gonna say it outright. No one ever does that. You know, very rarely do people even tell you they're not gonna be friends with you anymore. They just stop texting you back. They just stop being there for you. They'd stop being maybe even, you know, you, you stop being able to maybe communicate with them. They might even block you for some reason. Do you know what I mean? So that never, ever happens. You just have to kind of read the signs and be grown up enough to accept some, no, be grown up enough to, or mature enough actually, to just accept their decision, regardless of if you think it's ill-informed and just move accordingly. So I was a nigga who's a fan of y'all before I got in this. At this point, I'm looking like, Man, if niggas don't respect what I got going on, man, fuck what y'all got going on too. We could, I ain't, it really ain't like that, but I ain't ducking no smoke from nobody. We could all get into it. It should always be like that. Even if you like what that person does, it should always be done from like an arm's distance. It should never be done from, oh, I love everything that you do in the hopes that my love is going to show you that I'm your friend and I'm going to get something from you. It should always be done from, yeah, I like what you do, but you just stay over there type of vibe. Yo, WAP 2324, fuck you, nigga. He said, yo, act. Yeah, he ain't sitting right with me neither. Nah, nigga, I, I ain't gonna lie. We gotta blip. This was sponsored by the Casamigos this morning at 8 a.m. Yeah, I just wanna know. I don't even want Charlemagne to even have no conversation with no more haters about me without him addressing why he ain't been on my podcast. 
When I did Brilliant Idiots, like years ago, when I did Breakfast Club months ago, by the way, over a million views, both of them. You see, the difference with like shows, that's why I knew this shit was gonna happen. Nigga, I did show shit, show say, yo, let me know. Nigga, I'm gonna do your shit. Nigga, he been done it. I think he did like once or twice. I don't know, whatever, whatever it is. But at least reciprocity. You feel me? I cause a hell of a drill. Now I don't give a fuck about nothing. But that's what I realized too in my little corner of the internet. I very rarely reach out to anybody. I think I can count on maybe one hand. But I'm also somebody that doesn't take stuff personally. So if somebody leaves me on scene or anything, it kind of is what it is. But I'm also aware that it's only because of the sort of quote unquote level that I'm at. The moment I start to progress and get a little bit bigger, have a little bit more quote unquote fame, a little bit more viewership, things like that will change. And those people will probably double back and start saying, hey, you know, sorry, I missed this, you know, seven years later or whatever, maybe. And you don't hold that against them. It just kind of is what it is. It's the nature of the game sort of thing. I'm not really that bothered or perturbed by it. But you should never go into it thinking it's like a love thing. It's a vibe thing. It's never that. It's always transactional. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? And sometimes the balance is a little bit skewed in their favor. Sometimes it comes back in your favor. And when it does, you use it to your advantage. And if it does, if you don't want to, you don't want to. Y'all niggas can take it however you want. And also, I feel... Y'all could put it, print it, do anything with it. Nigga. I feel a way that Gillian Wild ain't been on my shit either. The fuck? Nigga, y'all use my studio. It wasn't that hard once Wack connected the numbers. I said, yo, come here, do this. Y'all can shoot my shit. I will, we could record if he, whatever. All right, nigga, I don't care how big y'all think y'all are now, nigga. It's my, t it's a swap. Like, what's up? Okay, I'm going to wait till All-Star Game. Okay, I'm going to wait till this. Okay, I'm going to, y'all free? Okay. Are y'all ever going to be it? Man, I see them interviewing bum ass things. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So basically, in conclusion, what we know now is that he's always wanted the approval of the industry. As much as he likes to talk about chat niggas and carving his own lane, doing it on his own, which I think is super commendable to come in and essentially rewrite the media playbook in hip-hop nonetheless and essentially do away with the old guard completely because i detest and hate some of these hip-hop gatekeeper types like the ebros and paul rosenbergs and all these kind of up their own ass dickheads and stuff right i fucking hate them so the fact that someone like a academics who is incredibly uncool incredibly dorky incredibly lame but has found out a way to be very successful in that avenue and he pisses those guys off i'm always going to root for him and i think that's something to kind of hold up you know as an achievement and be very proud of but for some reason it's not enough he still wants the approval of the kind of og you know gatekeeper type of people and to have their somewhat approval when it's never going to come because they kind of you know maybe move a certain way have a different outlook on life and maybe just essentially just never seen him as a cool guy they always kind of see him somebody that they kind of need to put up with because he's one of the biggest platforms in the you know in the scene and not somebody they actually respect and there's something that also i don't think academics realizes i think as much as people like myself do actually respect his hustle and his grind i think there's some people out there that just accept that he's an necessary evil they don't even they're not even happy that he's in the industry and the moment he kind of wanes or he goes down a bit or they can remind him of where what they think of him they'll do it and they're obviously doing it by what he's is describing they're asking to use his studio to record other guests but then they're not agreeing to do his podcast in that same studio <laughs> you know that's the clearest example you can tell of somebody not fucking with you in the slightest they're okay to ask for favors to get something from you, but if you want something from them, they completely go ghost. So he needs to realize that quickly that it's always going to be like that because he's not really the coolest guy in the world, really. And, and it kind of is what it is, really, to be honest. But it's also an industry thing where relationships are never really what you, they seem. They're always transactional. And the quicker you realize it, the better for you.